Myopia is really a lifestyle disease. What about the Maya makes it really great for children? Every child in my practice gets a axial length measurement at every visit. Acquisition time is only 20 seconds. So having the Maya all in one device that's able to measure axial length rapidly and easily is critical. We're here in Kuala Lumpur for APAO 2023. Here to talk to us today about the Maya and how it can really boost the practice of those who are seeing a lot of children with myopia on the front lines is Dr. Sun Chun Shin. Dr. Sun is a Singapore-based clinician scientist specialized in managing progressive myopia in children. Welcome, Dr. Sun. Hi, thank you very much for having me. What would you describe as the state of pediatric ophthalmology in Singapore? I would say we have very good uh, pediatric ophthalmology service in the major hospitals. Um, all equipped with state-of-the-art equipment and biometers to be able to manage these children. However, all the kids or children that we are seeing and managing are really the tip of the iceberg. So for example, in Singapore, we have 40,000 uh, birth rate babies every year. We know that 80% of them will turn myopic eventually. So that's 30,000 children per year that we can potentially treat. So no matter how many hundreds or thousands of patients that we see in our clinic every week, we'd not be able to manage with this tsunami or epidemic of myopia patients. So as a clinician, what's really important to you when you're diagnosing children with myopia? As a clinician, the most important thing I want to uh, know is how fast is the myopia progressing? And is it causing this problem of axial elongation because axial elongation is the key to complication from myopia. For example, retinal detachment, macular degeneration is all because of excessive elongation of the eye. So what role does the Maya play in all of this? So um, I think there is a great role in um, step-down care and community-based optometry practice to get the optometrist into the game of uh, controlling myopia. Now, a key problem is that the optometry shops do not have biometers traditionally. So I think that's where Maya can come in. If every optical shop is able to have a Maya installed, then they can monitor uh, children with progressive myopia. And not every child will need to come to a hospital for a review. You know, what, what about the Maya makes it really great for children? It is an all-in-one device that measures the corneal curvature as well as axial length in one shot, and acquisition time is only 20 seconds. Mm. Most children are able to tolerate that measurement. Uh, there are prior devices on the market that's able to do that, but those devices are meant for adult cataract surgery planning and not really designed specifically for children. The availability of biometer to measure axial length is critical in any eye clinic. So in our clinic, we are fortunate to have several to, because we have a lot of patients. But if your eye clinic do not have an existing optical biometer and you are managing uh, many children with progressive myopia, then I think they would benefit greatly uh, from having a Maya in their clinic. How do you monitor myopia with the Maya? So every child in my practice gets a axial length uh, measurement at every visit. And from then, I can look at the axial length progression to tell how, how fast is the eye growing and how much is the myopia progressing. So having the Maya uh, all-in-one device that's able to measure axial length rapidly and easily uh, is critical. So I know there are a lot of special tools for specifically monitoring axial length. For instance, you can connect to the database. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you use those tools in your practice. Maya also have a feature of a built-in uh, normative database and they are able to plot the patient's current axial length against uh, the population. That generates a report that I can see uh, how fast is the eyeball elongating compared to the normal individual. Mm -hmm. So that is very useful for both uh, me, for me to monitor the myopia and also to show the parents uh, how their child is doing compared to the rest of the population. Let's say you have a new patient that comes into your office and you suspect that they're myopic. How does that work, and with the Maya in particular? First, we need to establish what is the true amount of myopia in these children. Compared to adults, it's a lot harder to measure the true state of refractive error. 
uh, they have a very strong accommodation ability. So when they accommodate, it falsely increases the myopia artificially when, they, when you try to measure it. So to truly measure the amount of myopia, you actually need to give them eye drops to paralyze the focusing muscle in the eye. And then we measure the uh, refraction after we give the eye drops. Following that, then I will measure the axial length using a biometer. And then I will look at the refractive error and the axial length to correlate them and see whether if the high myopia is truly due to an elongation of the eyeball. Now, there are other causes of myopia other than eyeball elongation. The cornea, the surface of the eye being steeper, or even sometimes a cataract in a child can cause the myopia to increase. What are some of the other features about the Maya that you really find yourself using a lot? Another very useful feature on the Maya is the integration of a cornea topographer. So that allows me to look at the curvature of the cornea. And for some children who have astigmatism, we are worried about this condition called keratoconus. And having a cornea topographer built in I'm able to assess the child's risk of having keratoconus at the same time as I measure the axial length. Now that's a unique feature that's not available on any other machine. What do you see as kind of some, some of the challenges with the parents of pediatric myopia patients? Myopia is really a lifestyle disease. So the parents need to be aware of the situation of the child's myopia. When they're convinced that there is a problem, then they will be motivated to try to change the child's lifestyle to prevent further myopia progression. Some parents will feel that myopia is a very common problem. Everybody has it, it's not a big deal. Why do I need to treat it? On the other hand, there are some parents that are very anxious of um, every degree increase in spectacle power. Uh, having a tool to um, be able to print out a report to show the parents what is the state of the eye is very useful. This parent education, it just sounds like it can go a long way to really helping out you know, parent anxiety for those who might not as, be as familiar with the disease. You know, how does the information that you get from the Maya help you in this parent education process? So Maya generates a report of the trend of axial length measurement from the past visits, and it plots it on a curve uh, against normative database. And the parents will be able to see the length of the eyeball compared to other children on a national level. So it's a bit similar to height and weight growth charts that a lot of parents are familiar with. They see that their kids are shorter or a lot taller or heavier than other kids, and then they will try to do something about it. Well, it definitely looks like doctors in Singapore, Asia Pacific, and around the world have a powerful tool in the fight against the myopia epidemic with the Maya. Dr. Sun, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. And for all of you out there watching, be sure to go to TopCon's website and check out the Maya. They've got some really, really great videos and info showing exactly what this device can do for you. See you next time.